Hello and welcome to the third and final lesson in this series on how to build an Android app. My name is Jez and I'm going to teach you how you can package up your application and submit it to the Google Play Store. So let's begin. Now, carrying on from our previous lesson on going through the basics of the, the free app building platform App Inventor, um, we are building or in the process of putting together a little application that allows us to press a button and it will pick a random idea for us to draw. I've added a little, um, added, uh, added a little few uh, features from the last lesson. And as you can see, I've added a logo to the front. If you remember, I was encouraging you to get the functionality working first before you start uh, polishing the appearance of your application. It just helps you manage your development time more. So you're not wasting, um, wasting time and effort on an idea that might not actually work in the end. But we've got our functionality working, so it's time to make it look pretty. So all I did for this was I went over into the user interface section and I grabbed the image component over, okay? And in there, you can see from the right hand column, you can set um, what uh, the picture is going to be, okay? And you just click on the upload and you can navigate to the image that you've saved on your machine, okay? Um, I just picked a nice little um, uh, logo app, first coding app, um, and it appears on screen as, as such, okay? I'm just gonna delete that additional image that I've added, like so, and there you go. I also made good use of the uh, media, uh, a media component in particular, the text to speech. So I wanted not only the idea to appear on screen, but I also wanted the application to read it out as well. So all I did was drag over the text to speech. Okay, nothing appears on, on the screen because it's a hidden component, but you know you've dragged it in because the non-visible components appear down below. And as you can see, I have a text-to-speech component. The text-to-speech component's quite funny. You can set the pitch, so you can have it talk really squeaky or you can have it talk really low like this. And you can give it accents depending on what country you would like it to set, set it to. You can also set how quickly or slow it reads as well. So if you've got a complicated bit of text that it's reading out, you might want to slow the rate down to help your, um, to help the user understand what's being said more. But once you've dragged it in, um, you can then head over to the blocks and you can see here, it's added it to our component list. If you click on it, the main one is this purple one here, okay? And basically, whatever we, whatever jigsaw piece we bolt in or connect here, it's going to read out. So I could add in a bit of text here, for example, a bit of text to say hello, and it will read out the word hello. But in this instance, I'm just going to bin it. I can bin stuff just by hitting delete if I wanted to, or dragging it over to this bin icon here. In this instance, I went over to the label and I grabbed this block here, label text, and clipped it in. So as you can see, it's going to speak whatever text is in label one. And there we have it. We have the ideas generator app. We have, we have it selecting from a random list. We have it displaying on screen and we have it speaking it out as well, which is really cool. And in the design tab, we have, we're keeping it nice and simple. We have the button with the writing on that directs the user to press for an idea. We have the label, which will display the actual idea on screen. And now we have that text to speech component that's gonna read it out for us. Once you're happy, or if it's still a work in progress, you might want to test how well it's behaving or how good it's currently looking, whether it's heading in the right direction or not. You can build it, we can compile it, and we can load it onto your phone. To do this, I first would recommend you go to projects 
and save. App Inventor saves your work automatically, probably every minute, every couple of minutes, but to make sure it's saved the latest features you've added, just go to projects and save. Okay. The next thing, we're going to build it. We're going to build it. So as you can see, we have a build option. Clicking on that, the one you want is save.apk to my computer. So the APK file is the file that you would like normally download from the Play Store to install an application on your machine. That's the file type that's needed to install the app on your machine. So if you click on that, it'll start building it. OK, as you can see, I've got a message to say the server is currently busy. So everybody is building an app <laughs> at the minute. OK, but it wouldn't be long before you actually are able to compile this project in an APK file. So I'm going to try again. There we go. I didn't have to wait very long. And there's a progress bar which slowly creeps up to 100%. Obviously, if you're the bigger the app, if your project's big, it's going to take a little while longer to compile. But you shouldn't have to wait more than more than a couple of minutes. OK, what that's going to do, it's going to download the APK file onto your computer, usually in your downloads folder. So what you need to do is grab your USB cable, grab your phone and connect it up and drag that APK file over to your phone. There should be a file explorer on your phone. So you need to open up your file explorer, find the APK file and just tap on it. And it will say, do you want to install this, um, this application? If you hit yes to install, it'll probably have a little hissy fit because by default, there are security settings in place on your phone that won't allow you to install applications unless they come specifically from the Google Play Store. But they'll, it'll give you an option to override. It will say, are you sure you want to install this application, although it hasn't come from the Play Store? Are you sure you want to do this? But keep pushing through and it will allow you to install it. So I prepared our ideas generator um, application um, earlier. OK, so I'm just going to stop from the share. There I am again. OK, I installed it already on my phone and there we go. OK, there's our little app. And if I press for an idea, draw a dog. hopefully you heard that. Whoop, draw a dog and I got draw a dog on there. Press it again for another one. Draw a cat. Draw a cat. OK, I should have spent more time thinking of ideas to come up with but you get the idea it's um it's not only displaying the uh idea on screen but it's also reading it out make uh, allowing um allowing more people to use the application and that's the key here when you're designing apps you need to make them inclusive as possible maybe it's a child who can't read very well but they'll still be able to use the app because it's speaking to them. It's telling them the idea. OK, so try and make your apps as inclusive as possible and you make full use of all the features available in App Inventor. Let's do one more. What can we get? Draw a tree. Draw a tree. Perfect. Um, brilliant. So we know that the app works. OK, and you can send that file to family and friends for them to install on your on your phone and for them to test and give you feedback because feedback's really important when it comes to refining your idea, making, making these tiny tweaks that um, overall collectively add up uh, to make a, um, a new improved version of your, of your idea. So I'm going to reshare my screen. So where do we go from here then? Well, um, interestingly enough, we've got our APK file. <laughs> now, you've passed it around to family and friends. Um, they've given you feedback and you've tweaked it and you've compiled it again. And now you've got a really great app. So let's get it out into the real world. And you can do this using Google Play. 
Google Play is Google's app store. We're all familiar with it. If you've got Android devices, uh, you can access it on your phone or online or on your computer via a web browser. Um, and to do this, you're going to need to set up a developer account. OK, you go to uh, Google Play developer console. If you search that in Google, it'll take you to the um, uh, to the to the correct page. Google Play developer console. And you're going to need to set up a developer account. And unfortunately, it's going to cost money. App Inventor is completely free to use and build and, and, and build apps for your phone locally. But if you want to distribute them via the Play Store, it's going to cost $25 for life. OK, it's only a one off payment. If you're developing for Apple, they charge an annual developer fee. But Google charge a one off fee of $25. So once you've paid that for your developer account, you've got that for life. And it's just a case of logging in. OK, you can see here I've got one account. I've got several accounts, um, developer accounts with Google Play. But I've got uh, this one here. I've got a, a few apps in um, uh, linked to this account and we can go into each one and, ex uh, and see information about about each one. Setting up, however, it's a little tricky, but there, um, it does guide you through the process. So we'd click on click on our app here like so and it's just a case of following the prompts so app name we could add in our, our ideas generator for example um, our idea generator and we could work through all the all the settings filling them out as we go it's advisable to get some good screenshots of your application <clears throat> and also uh, get a good icon as well because they're going eventually it, it will eventually ask you for some images to include on the play store and take inspiration from the other games and apps that you've previously downloaded look at how their play store has been written and has been laid out think about the branding and and the feel of your images uh, make them all consistent so the images and screenshots of your application um, all fit with the overall theme of what you're trying to achieve. I love this. It is so easy for people to develop apps and get their apps out there. OK, what I don't like <laughs> is that Google Play change the menus like every six months and it can get a bit confusing if you're used to the current way it's all laid out and then it changes suddenly but unfortunately um, there's nothing I can do, do about that really it, but whenever there's a change to the Google Play Store um, the menus are still laid out in a, in a clear fashion so it is easy to navigate things are just in a different place every so often. Um, I mentioned about an icon, so I'd like to finish by showing you how you add an icon to your application. If I if I load up my app now, I uh, probably can't see it, but um, it gives you a default. Um, it gives you a default app inventor icon if you haven't already selected one. So I'm going to finish by showing you how to add an icon to your application. So it's back into App Inventor. Here we go. Back into App Inventor. And it's a very, very similar process to how I inserted uh, my logo to the to the front screen of the application. OK, you need to make sure you select screen screen. OK, so if you select the screen like so, OK, it pulls up all the settings to do with the overall um, settings to do with your application. So this is like the umbrella settings, like I mentioned earlier. And if you scroll down, you've got app name, so we can give a, a different name. This app name is what appears under the icon on your device when you install it. And the one we're after is icon. So if we click on this icon, OK, we can either upload a new image or we can use a an existing one that I've previously uploaded into the project. Well, I'm going to stick with this icon here. OK, this icon is named 748047. 
Yep, not the best named icon, but um, we'll go with it anyway. So I select that. And what that will do, when your app is being compiled, it'll make sure it uses that image for the icon. So when you come to next install it, you'll have a nice shiny, nice little shiny icon on your device. And we'll leave it there. I hope this has given you encouragement to get stuck in and uh, get to know App Inventor a bit more. Like I said, the only way to really get to grips with this free coding platform is just to get stuck in, just to get stuck in and explore all the different sections that are available. There are constantly uh, updates being made to this platform, so new features are always being added. And I've noticed recently they're, they're starting to introduce coding competitions as well to encourage people more to, to explore their ideas and step outside their comfort zone for a little bit to see where it might lead them. And I encourage you to do the same. So yeah, thank you for uh, um, taking part in these lessons. I hope you've got a lot from it. And I hope um, it's given you the encouragement to get out there and create. All right. Take care. My name's Jez and thank you very much.